Hello and welcome and thank you for joining us today and thank you so much for having us over here. My name is Kanav Rishi Kumar. I'm here on behalf of Association of Vapors India and joining me today is going to be Samrat Chaudhary, Dr. Kiran Melkote and Jagannath. Samrat is a former journalist who has been involved in THR in India and globally. He is a, is a director of AVI and the former president of INCO. Dr. Kiran Melkote is an orthopedic surgeon based in New Delhi and member of Association for Harm Reduction and Education Research, a body of medical prof professionals focused on risk reduction in interventions in public health. Jagannath is a former smoker, vaping advocate, and an industrialist from Hyderabad. And I, myself, a former smoker who switched to vaping and I'm now pretty much just the funny face in AVI. Yeah, well. With that, so I'll let everyone say hello because everyone seems to be camera shy today, which is not what the case should be because we very regularly <laughs> hold Funvocacies online and we do these kind of streams quite frequently. So guys, shed the camera fears. What is what is that chair you're sitting on? It looks like a throne to me. <laughs> it is. <laughs> I, I like to play a lot of games and I like to sit on a throne and I call it the Game of Thrones. And that yeah, is okay. probably the worst I've ever had in 2021. Do you have a flush as well? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I, see, see, this is um, this is a whole new kind of a layout for me. This this beautiful stream which is being hosted today, and um, I was very taken aback by the fact that I was there full screen. I'm used to me being in one tiny corner and not having so much focus on myself, and that caught me <laughs> off guard. So. Yeah. So uh, today we're going to be discussing several topics all related to Indian situation with vaping. And uh, we're going to have a panel discussion. We're going to discuss with everyone the situation in India with vaping right now. As many of you may know, in late uh, of 2019, somewhere around September, the government of India used an ordinance to ban vaping. And uh, later to concrete this ban, they passed on the bill in the both the courts of the law and uh, since the ruling party was the one which bought the ordinance it you know kind of cleared off instantly and the ban was in place the ban initially said that personal use is allowed and it got complicated because even though personal use was allowed and only sales were prohibited which already restricted access to so many smokers and smoking is a big big problem in india it became further complicated when they actually banned out the carrying of vape mods on flights. So the situation is unique. It is messed up. It is bad. I know there are a lot of countries out there which have a ban. I know a lot of countries have gone the restriction or the regulation way. And uh, we're just over here to tell you about the condition in India, talk about what problems we are facing, how maybe we can all stand united and fight this battle because this battle is not only for us but for pretty much everyone over here we are actually fighting for the rights of every smoker out there to give them a chance for a safer alternative so i'll start off with the weird question which is why why would the government of india ban this out of the blue like why a ban they could have chosen to regulate and you know we don't have to kid we don't have to lie we don't have to pretend over here we know bans fail in india like all kind of bans in India fail very, very easily. The news has been about a lot of things recently. And if you've been following the Indian news, you know, some famous people have been in trouble for things way more dangerous than, you know, vaping and not to point fingers, not to put blame, not to say what is or what is not is true since we don't know any of that, but we know that banning just doesn't work. So Jagannath, maybe you can start us off with why would the government of India choose to ban vaping? Jagannath, Chucky, you need to you unmute are... yourself. Unless you're like pretending. Still can't be heard. I'm telling you, he's doing it intentionally, guys. He, he loves to play. <laughs> he's got a very vivid uh, sense of humor. And, you know, he's been messaging me to use sign language. And I think he's just trying to do the same thing now. Yeah. Uh, Jaggi and audio. I'm <laughs> actually going to pretend Jaggi's. Oh, it actually might not be working in reality, guys. Dr. Kiran, okay. why don't you answer the question from your perspective for now then? Okay. okay no under problem. you, there so, is that mute 
yeah so uh, if you actually look at the situation in india it's actually multifaceted but if you want to be very fair and if you want to be very balanced and you know if you want to give everybody the benefit of doubt so you have to look at it from the public health perspective so that's what the government pretended now at the time when the ban was enacted uh, there was news that dual was going to come to india uh, there was also the scare about evali which turned out to be because of because of thc vapes which is the whole which is a whole different ball game so they used that to railroad the whole opposition to the vapic ban so ultimately it got carried because we were supposed to save our children and because of evali but you know <clears throat> having said that if you probe a little deeper there is i mean the whole thing is a bit the whole thing is much more complicated in india because here big tobacco is the government to be very frank i mean that's the simplest way to say it so when you have that kind of a thing so you have the government which has a duty to the which has a duty to the citizens in order to safeguard public health so they are supposed to sort of reduce the use of tobacco or ban it altogether and then you have the government which uh, directly or indirectly owns tobacco companies so they have a duty to their shareholders they have a duty to their investors to the money in order to keep sales of tobacco going strong so you know there's a conflict over there either way you look at it if they try to do justice to the tobacco industry it's in conflict with their duty to the citizens and vice versa so that is where that is where the whole problem comes along because here it is that way where you where almost 9 uh, out of 10 cigarettes are actually sold by the government of india eventually so that's huge that's huge revenue you're talking about apart from that uh, we also have one of the highest we also have one of the highest tax structures on cigarettes not uh, this is not across the board this does not this does not include tax on smokeless tobacco or or on the unorganized sector which is bds which is unfiltered tobacco so you know they have gone after cigarettes itself which is the lowest which is the lowest proportion it's only about 4% of the problem so that is where you have to look a little deeper at the motives if you look at it if you look at it across the world vaping had started to displace vaping had started to displace cigarettes so that obviously scared this that that obviously scared big tobacco government try to do its bit with duty to big tobacco and that's why we have the vaping ban i think that's my take on it do you want to add something samra yeah so i mean while i agree uh, with everything you say i mean there was uh, of course the financial angle because the government itself is a stakeholder in the tobacco industry and this was borne out by the stock of tobacco companies going up when the news of the ban broke so it's quite evident uh, you know who benefited from the ban uh, there is the there is also uh, you know i think there are two more factors which i would like to highlight one is the influence of the who thinking you know on on uh, i mean our health minister at that time was a former who advisor and tobacco control was his pet thing so he was quite steeped in that prohibitionist you know sort of thinking that which is naive in my you know like kind of pointed out right at the start bans don't work so while it on paper it looks really beautiful that we have banned vaping have you really banned it what is the impact what really happened you know on the ground so uh, so but who had a lot of influence there uh, in uh, developing nations where who does a lot of programs and funds a lot of activities it bears a lot more influence than it does in the west so you know uh, when we talk about who influence in developing world it is a thing to reckon with and it's also uh, evident in the language of the ban you know the way it was uh, framed was we are complying with fctc guidelines or uh, statutory i mean you know they're saying that uh, it is mandatory on india to follow uh, the fctc uh, decisions uh, which was to uh, regulate our ban so therefore we are choosing the ban option and that's why we are doing it the uh, the second uh, you know angle which i would like to point out is the influence of foreign ngos and policy groups 
which again is a serious thing in india because unlike in other countries here they work directly with governments or state departments and directly fund programs so uh, it's not that uh, you know they're working in partnership they're directly funding a state health department uh, and therefore they bear a lot of influence and if you see there was first a ban i mean the way they did it was they went state to state to state got the ban in this state then went to the next state and got the ban in the next state and suddenly you have 15 or 17 states banning it which then created pressure on the central government or uh, actually gave it a justification to ban it saying that oh 17 states have done it so we are listening to the voice of our states and then going ahead and doing this so uh, yeah the influence of these groups uh, should really be noted because what they are doing is they are they are saying that in the western nations we don't need a ban but in developing nations we need a ban which according to me is discriminatory and creating two classes of people that uh, people in developing nations don't deserve the right to harm reduction and i find that quite infuriating with that jaggi if your mic is working please come in Oh no, that you you got to say, yeah, yeah. Jaggi. If you have something to add, <laughs> speak work? now okay. or forever hold your peace. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, okay. Now, awesome. Now I, I wanted to say, if I can say something, and if I can get heard, <laughs> I will probably say it. You know, <laughs> I, you you, you got to follow the money here. Okay, uh, we've been having a lot uh, of stuff going on. Uh, the government owns. Uh, mid- almost a majority stake in uh, big tobacco kiran already mentioned the kind of uh, money that was getting lost and here was uh, a technology coming out gaining acceptance uh, with sure success that's what is happening i mean everybody who has been involved in the advocacy movement uh, was a former smoker you know is a former smoker and so that's why we found it working and that's why we have been doing it and that started getting people nervous and if you really watch it uh, samrat it was when jule made this big announcement yeah right jule made this big announcement saying we are coming into india with this big hoo ha and that's it they in fact even said it publicly in a court of law they actually yeah. said we are doing this because jule is coming yeah. that was one of the justifications in court so yeah. i think it kind of says it uh, says it all you know as to why they actually did this and and see jule had captured like 70% <clears throat> of the us market in under 2 years right so that i think was really spooky to the cigarette monopoly here of which obviously the government is a part so i mean the go- government had been considering a ban since 2014 but 3 months after jule announced it suddenly banned it you know i mean that that was so clear that it was a financial decision and to just uh, rub salt on people's wound it was announced by the finance minister you know it was not announced <laughs> by the health minister but the finance minister guys health is secondary money is first we we need to ban this we need to yeah, stop it now is, you know that show fct or fctc machinery keeps saying article 5.3 we are banning consumers we are banning media from attending the w the fctc and here it is so brazen that it, you know who the decision was for and not only uh, india gets to chair a cop but the who gives india an award for banning <laughs> see it's a little better. shocking who hasn't lost all credibility in the last two years No, no. Actually, you they they have. Have. They they have. You shouldn't pretending. be surprised if uh, the Tobacco Growers Association worldwide gives India a award for owning stakes in the largest tobacco <laughs> company supplier, and they'll go and accept that one as well with great pride. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah. Nothing. You, you, you can't take anything away from these guys. Nothing is impossible for them. But okay, so see, I get it. I, I get there was a financial factor. I get they couldn't risk more people switching over to something like vaping instead of smoking. They needed to stop Jewel from entering, and Jewel's just the bad guy in my eyes because of that. All that time, you know, I, I don't like it personally, but a part of me understands that money is money, and money makes the world go round. Why would they do the flight ban, like? Come on, those of us who'd already switched, there's no bloody way we're going to go back to smoking those stinkies. We we'd made the switch. Let us have a healthier alternative, man. We 
we weren't bothering anyone we weren't trying to you know push the product onto other people we were just happy just living healthier why would they do the flight ban because that hurts i i can't travel anywhere without carrying my wave pod and as an outcome i don't travel anymore that's the solution <laughs> Like, I tried. Honestly, there was nothing. Like, <laughs> nothing to do with me not traveling, guys. It was the yeah, it was yeah. The no, no, I just tried. Yeah, I know. Exactly. I and if you actually look at it in the days leading up uh, to this ban on uh, ban on going on flights with the vape mods, uh, I I actually remember the whole time. So I had taken a few flights, and uh, each time I passed security. uh the guys would obviously take it apart and see what it is and then they would check with their superiors whether any notification has come in they were expecting it for a long time and i do remember because i was carrying a tweet uh uh from the then aviation minister i think it was mr surjit so he had tweeted that uh, it would be it would be allowed on flights and personal use was fine so i was carrying that tweet with me every time but then uh, he himself he himself put out a notification to the guys in cis so the next flight i remember it, uh, they they tried to take it away from me luckily i had a few people working in the airport who knew me so i was able to hand it off to them but i shudder to think what would have happened if i was at a strange airport where i didn't know anybody and you know it's it's okay it's even though there's a ban around it's not that difficult to get stuff but why should i have to give it up when they had assured us on the floor of the on the floor of the parliament that use is fine personal use is fine as long as you're not manufacturing as long as you're not selling as long as you're not giving out free samples so i don't see why they had to you know do a, why they had to do an about turn i think it was just a matter of squeezing this whole thing you know that might take some rat see I, i you know i think the ban would not you know we already uh, discussed why it was a financial decision then a health decision uh it was hurting the cigarette market in which the government uh has significant stake so it was more a protectionist move than a health move right and uh, who are these cigarette who are the people that the government thought would be using these products are people who'd be taking flights so it's a way to discourage stick <coughs> away from cigarettes to vaping i mean it's purely as that and how do they implement it because see in the bill itself they could not have brought in a ban on personal use because that would be easily challenged on grounds of infringement of you know individual liberty uh, so so they could not bring it in the bill itself but this is a sideway action that okay you know we could not put it in the bill but we can enact this as a you know a, it, it doesn't have to pass the house of parliament it can just be an order but of course it is unconstitutional because if the law itself is saying that person use is not banned then why are you banning carrying of it so it is something which can be challenged and it's something that we are looking to challenge i mean it because of the pandemic things got delayed but uh, we are renewing action to look uh, to challenge this uh, and see what the courts say what the thinking of the courts is but in my view it was purely an act of uh, preventing cigarette smokers from making a switch what do you think jaggi uh, uh, i would really argue argue that uh, you you could say that because mods have got batteries in them okay and so that's what it was and that's why it, they banned that note because note 7 it was because that was kind of catching fire and stuff like that but then you allow so many other products okay that could be probably the only technical reason uh, apart from that it's just uh, one more enforcement to ensure not that it has hurt me okay everyone has got ways and means around it okay so i drive everywhere i i need to go and i i am happily vaping away and uh, no one can do it and so that's how i and man there are i know friends across in so many towns and so i just tell them hey i'm landing up give me something and you have alternative uh, products to take us through that uh, intermediate phase from from one airport out of the other so it's really not uh, effective it's only an inconvenience so they're just trying to inconvenience us 
probably wanting us to go back to smoking because then that will in increase their coffers, right? Uh, you know, so, so that's all they're looking at. Uh, they're wanting us to go back to smoking. And they want smoking. to milk the cows as much as they can. Yeah, and, and, and you know, see, the, the point is that the government is really not serious. What's the percentage of uh, tobacco users in India who actually smoke cigarettes? That's a small fraction, right? It's the BDs and the chewing tobacco, which is actually the huge problem. That class and that community has completely been, uh, you know, denied proper access. You know, filterless cigarette BDs are the worst, right? And uh, they have been denied this opportunity for for good THR, and uh, that's where uh, it, it just shows how non-serious this government is about uh, health. It's 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 really messed up, man. Ever since they came up with this ban and the travel ban on top of it, I I I've not traveled too much, but every time when I've traveled, I've just had to go buy one in the black market to wherever I've gone. It's it's nonsensical. Yeah. Now I own ten mods. I, I had I was happy with two mods. Now I have ten because everywhere I go, I have to buy one. Awesome, awesome. You, you can you can try and share it as yeah. <laughs> See, which is not to say uh, See, sharing. Is sharing. Yeah, which is not to say it's, that like, there's no big secret. Them. Every banned product is available everywhere openly. Yeah. Yeah, but you know, see, people are finding a way around it also. You know, I've known people uh, to dismantle everything, carry batteries in, uh, check in. You know, the more you have these bans, people, it's not like people are not going to find a way around it. You know, it's not, it's not like some illegal hard drugs that they're doing. You know? I mean, liquids you can still carry in your bag. They can't stop you from doing that. Uh, in your check-in bag, you can dismantle and carry batteries separately. You can ship it. You know, I've, I've known people who actually <laughs> if they're going for a long time to ship it to their destination. So it's on YouTube. This it makes life more difficult. It is not that you know. It is not something. You know, See, I have not... a take, Samrat. I think I. Uh, you know how healthy things are supposed to be difficult. Like if you want a good physique and a good body. <laughs> In a healthy system, you have to go to the gym and you have to work out. The government of India say if you want to quit smoking and live a healthier life, put effort into it. <laughs> Don't just casually go and order a <laughs> more online. This is, this is our free <laughs> creativity program. I think that's what it yeah, is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You think you work for it. That, that's good. Yeah. I really like it. That's a good take. There are so we many videos on YouTube which audience. tell you. Yeah, 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 please, please. Yeah, sorry, sorry, doctor, doctor, carry on. No, no, I'm just saying there are so many videos on YouTube which tell you how to carry a weight pod across security in the airport. <laughs> hey, Samrat, remember <laughs> we were looking at one of these tiny little devices which you could unscrew. This yeah, it's a watch thing, the, right? The, yeah, the yeah, yeah. Screw this one and put it into a torch, right? I mean, come on. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. People tape jewels behind their shavers. I remember the shavers and trimmers. So they tape jewels to their shavers and trimmers and take it across security. The jewel shows up. Yeah, it has. I mean, yeah, you know, um, you're just a lot of ways. Right? And and the irony of it all is, you're doing all this to avoid harm from cigarettes. So I mean that, you know, see. It's sad. It, yeah. I mean, you know, this is not a normal argument. You know, in the sense, it's not that you're carrying a contraband. Which is harmful to your health, exactly. You know, which uh, the government is doing right by making it more difficult for you to carry around. Here, they are just making it more difficult for you to reduce harm to yourself <laughs> and to wean out of something which has taken you a lot of effort and struggle to do. Uh, and uh, and no one gets it. <laughs> you know, they don't see they don't see the harm they are causing by doing something like that. Uh, which is, according to me, the sad part. I mean, I have met people uh, on, like, you know, these guys on these uh, the security on flight. Uh, initially, of course, they were all like, nah, yeah, this is bad, this is bad. But now people, they also get it that this is less harmful because they may have confiscated from a lot of people and they would have told them their stories that, you know, I had a serious uh, whatever smoking habit and this has helped me. So now they get it. And I think maybe that's why uh, there is lax implementation of it now. Or at least that's something that I have noticed. I'm I'm not carrying my tin foil hat, but if I was, I'd put it on right now. See, we already know that the government of India, you know, owns a lot of the tobacco companies, and has a lot of shares in the tobacco company, to be precise, actually. And then, uh, if I'm not mistaken, 
they hold a lot of control over the life insurance corporation, corporation. as well completely all of yeah, it LIC, GIC. but what if it what if it's a deeper conspiracy what if they are confiscating our mods and then selling those in the black market themselves what if all of this is one big loop yeah that really need that file hat <laughs> yeah <laughs> i think we should take some questions from the audience yeah, sorry. All you know, you know, the reason doc, they are being there was a nice question. To now is because they have all transitioned out of smoking themselves. You know, they've used those mods and quit smoking. <laughs> oh, actually, so they wanted it for themselves. Now, see, they could have just asked. We're generous people, you know. Switching to vaping has saved our health, saved medical expenses. We would have given one each, anyways. Okay, so so the question uh, from the audience was from Sam. He wanted to know. Uh, it says Juul uses an addictive substance in their juices. Is that true? It's called nicotine. Yeah. Yes, doctor. But do you want to elaborate? Like we all, we all know it has. <laughs> but... Okay. 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 Uh, yeah, I should not be flippant about this. Like, so, I, yes, I, I, can, uh... I can give the basic one. Yes, Jewel. Uh, no, no. Jewel I should not be. Contain yes. nicotine. And yeah, it is known to be contain nicotine. Yeah. So it actually contains nicotine salts. So it's uh, uh, for the, I mean, you actually look at it, there's free base nicotine and there's nicotine salts. Nicotine salts are supposed to be smoother. So they, they actually enable you to vape, uh, vape a higher strength without feeling any throat burn. So the argument could be made that in the long run, the Juul and other pods uh, or any device that uses salts for that matter, because of the high strength of nicotine, they would be a little bit more addictive than pre-based nicotine or, you know, an open mod or if you're making your own liquids. So that kind of argument could be made. But ultimately, it is the same thing. So it is still nicotine. No, and, but yeah. Doc, uh, all said and done, wouldn't, you, wouldn't it be better to be addicted to a vape? which is safer than being addicted to smoking a cigarette. Which I, is I have a problem with the word addiction itself. I have a major problem with the word addiction. Habit See, forming. Uh, dependence. Yeah, I would say dependence. Dependence is a better word. See, uh, if, you look at the, if you look at the definition, if you look at the medical definition of addiction, nicotine does not fit any of those criteria. So I don't think we should call it addiction at all. It is not, I mean, it, 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 it should be something we call it as a habit forming. That is right, Kanav. Or something like dependence. That would be a term would be far more accurate for any kind of nicotine. So yes, you're right in the way that, you know, uh, if you look at the harms, if somebody is going to smoke or is going to vape, or if somebody is going to be using smokeless tobacco, then why not choose a product which does not have the associated harms of, say, something like cigarettes or BDs or even gutka, kani, zarda, so stuff like that. So yes, definitely. That's where you're right, Jaggi. Jaggi, congrats. congrats. This is officially the first time you've been right somehow. <laughs> <laughs> and got hurt as well. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So this brings know, me to an... Sorry. I got, I got to complete this. For those who don't know, Samrat's always complained and cribbed about the quality of my mic. And my cursed luck today, I couldn't get hurt again. <laughs> it was a conspiracy. I, <laughs> like, I, I think we need a one hour YouTube episode explaining Juggy and his mic problem. <laughs> I, I don't think Amazon sells any mic with Juggy is not bought already. He's, he's probably got a collection of mics somewhere hidden now. And, and with that, Juggy, you've been told to speak louder. Just uh, for the rec. All right. <laughs> that works. <laughs> Yeah. So, Doc, coming back to the question which uh, which you just answered, that is the nicotine and its you know dependence or uh, habit forming tendencies and all. How uh, do you educate? Like, see, the problem I face is I speak to so thanks to the way the world has been for the last two years. I've been you know interacting with doctors a lot because of certain post COVID issues, and uh, all of them seem to you know. When they see my vape mod, they say, this is such a bad thing. Stop it. And I'm like, no, no. See, I used to smoke cigarettes. I'm not carrying this for fun. I used to smoke a pack a day. And I quit smoking cigarettes and I switched to this. This was the aid I used. And they're like, no, this is so much worse. Like, isn't that a concern? How do you get doctors to stop saying this? Like, doctors are doctors. They, they need to know this. 
right sorry yeah so i think uh, yeah so i think there's a major uh, there is actually a major disconnect unfortunately see i remember reading way back in biochemistry that i mean this is one of the few things i clearly remember reading uh, it said very clearly nicotine is not carcinogenic nicotine is addictive but over the years and over you know we got this message hammered we got this message hammered into us by the who uh multiple world no- world no tobacco days and quit smoking initiatives so now nicotine has become conflated with tobacco so we have to understand see earlier uh barring a few few things like gums and patches which are not available in india there was no way to get clean nicotine so earlier it was probably convenient for the government to just equate nicotine with the evils of tobacco but what the fallout of that is over the years that has taken root in most of my fellow doctors minds and now it's quite difficult it's actually quite difficult there was a survey done uh, some time back and that showed over 80 85% of doctors in india believe that nicotine is carcinogenic so how do you combat that number so you can't ask a senior doctor who's you know been in practice for 25 30 years to go back and study biochem i can tell my friends which i have been doing but i can't go and tell somebody who's you know my hod to go and go 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 back and you know speak to his biochem professor and apologize profusely i can't do that so there are specific challenges but i think we meet that challenge by uh we have to start educating and we are already doing that but i think we just have to up this thing so we just have to keep going at the same message over and over until it takes root just like the other message has taken root we have to keep on going that that's the only way that's the way to set the narrative straight wow that's that's challenging to say the least but um, i i we can elaborate on this i think this itself can be a humongous long discussion but we do have questions coming from the audience and uh, we loving the interaction so rahim wants to know is it true that tobacco companies will end up selling vapes in india as well so this is i think okay, a very I, speculative I, I question like samrat is the best at speculating over here let's, see, uh, uh, let's look at the business tobacco companies are in you know they in the business of selling nicotine products the the format they are selling it in is cigarettes currently but if there is enough consumer demand uh, and there will be you know because why would anyone want uh, to use the most deadliest form of a product or of uh, nicotine consumption so as it is in the west that there is a massive switch away from combustibles that's going to happen in india too and who are the people who are going to service that need now and so obviously it will be tobacco companies which will make a switch from uh, combustibles to uh, selling less harmful products but that is not necessarily the problem because if i mean it could be an opportunity and a way to make these products available widely and at price points that people can afford so uh, yes i believe that if these products were regulated the big players will come in because you know if uh, when where there is consumer demand there will be someone to fill it and at a proportion uh, you know like india has a huge tobacco using population so the demand if it transition to less harmful or safer alternatives there will be players servicing that need which i don't think is necessarily the reason why these products shouldn't exist the products exist because they are less harmful not you know the argument that because big tobacco will be involved we should be banning them what is our problem our problem is uh, whether big tobacco makes money or is a problem that whether people die from tobacco use yep that's a great way to put it i mean if uh, i mean if you look at the if you look at the big if you look at the big car manufacturers they're moving to electric you're not going yeah. to disdain for it right that's how the world works yeah i mean you know i mean while while we uh, really support the small players and uh, uh, the small industry in this we also have to be pragmatic that it's a huge space and you need the big players to be servicing a market at price points that people can afford 
I hope that answers the question. No, but I, I think it suffices for now. <laughs> yeah. But um, uh, Stephanie would like to know: Have flavors been targeted in India, as we are seeing in Canada? Uh, everything is targeted in India. I, I, I mean, they've not made a distinction. So, everything is gone. Period. You know, they've not made. They're not bothered to make the distinction that you know you can smoke. You can smoke. Uh, Virginia tobacco or some sort of tobacco and yeah so every, everything is gone so it's not like i mean see the you know. the debate here is at a very uh, basic level whether these products should be allowed or not uh, the flavor discussion happens at a later stage when these products are allowed and then you want to figure out which is the best way to allow them so we are stuck at the basic allow or ban or don't ban level you know so uh, at least until now i mean since these products are banned of course there is uh, uh, not that much discussion about flavors yet stephanie to simplify as of right now there is no talks about the ban of flavors in specific they've not been targeted but since we are fighting against the ban we feel like we are walking around with a target on ourselves at times if you know what i mean that's that's a joke i mean no harm <laughs> Jaggi, you've been awfully quiet for a little while, man. Speak <laughs> louder. This is getting ridiculous. Okay, <laughs> no, but uh, <laughs> no, but honestly speaking, I mean, you know, the tobacco flavor itself is a flavor, right? I mean, you don't really have it's you, you don't really have tobacco sitting in it. It's only a flavor there, and so I think uh, at a very broad level, the stock of flavor bands itself is very silly. Because everything is actually a flavor, but then we are, like Samrat said, at a very, very basic level. And uh, kind of, if you didn't understand that, we really have a problem. Okay, I think this was directed more at you than anyone else. <laughs> no, I got it. I got it. Oh, so, you know. I, I just, yeah. So I, I, we okay. are like actually, yeah. So you know, we are actually like sitting here in a poor country. That's how we feel. You're actually sitting here in a poor country and looking at people argue about flavors when you don't have access to vapes at all. <laughs> so we're like, at least we'll get there one day, you know, when we can argue about flavors and nitpick. <laughs> yeah, as of right now, any no. flavor, any MG, I'm okay as long as anything. Okay. Exactly, exactly. That's exactly what I'm saying. No offense to Stephanie, that's a great question, but I'm hoping someday we should be having that debate in our parliament about you know. So then at least we would have got past the ban there. <laughs> Yeah. No, but but Stephanie's uh, question brings me to an interesting point. See, uh, we, we're not really completely alone in this battle. It is a global problem. At some level or the other, this uh, ban or restriction or regulation or flavor ban or control is a, is a nonsensical attempt by much larger, you know, organizations to control the fate. I'll say of tobacco smokers. And uh, what uh, what uh, Samrat? Maybe you can share some insight into it. But shouldn't international NGOs be you know? Shouldn't we all be working together, collaborating, getting together? Maybe we're already doing it. Maybe we're not. See, I'm I'm not very updated with all of these things. But what role do the international NGOs play in this whole position? We are talking only from ABI's perspective till now. But let's take it a little global. See, ah. Uh... If you mean consumer organization like us, then of course there is a global uh, push. I mean, uh, Inco is doing great work. In fact, just as we speak, they are in the UK uh, doing a rally, uh, talking about harm reduction. UK being the most pro THR nation there is, so there there is a collaboration among consumer groups and consumers. Of course, we are unpaid, unfunded volunteers, right? So. we are you know when and on the other hand you have the unions and the cpfks and billions of bloomberg cash which obviously gives them a uh, a lot more influence and uh, you know they can fund research they can go meet governments directly i mean you know point to note was just after the indian ban the indian prime minister went and met mike bloomberg in the us so you know that kind of uh, we don't we don't pull that kind of weight right even though we are consumers these are policies which are impacting us 
But what we have is a voice, right? I mean, if you look at Twitter right now, if you look at the COP9 hashtag or the COP9 FCTC hashtag, it is full of consumer voice. So that's how we make ourselves heard. I think those guys have just <laughs> given up on tweeting about COP uh, because I could hardly see any tweets from the other side. Uh, of course, there will be a paper coming out saying how the tobacco industry tried to influence the COP. So, uh, which basically pointing fingers at us and calling us. <laughs> so, Samrat, you are ITC. We secretly know it. <laughs> you yourself, you are all of ITC. Kafra is doing good work. Uh, I, I mean, look at this live stream. You know, it is uh, uh, there are uh, consumer organizations from across the world here at this live stream talking about their issues. So there is a lot of consumer, combined consumer action. There can be a lot more. And I think as time uh, goes by, we'll become more organized at individual country level and also at a global level. So we've just started, right? So, and, and we're not going anywhere because these decisions uh, impact our lives. So <clears throat> we are fighting for our lives here. So we're going to be at it for a while. And I think this is a great effort, right? I mean. What we're doing today is brilliant. So this is we we should not just sit by while the WHO ignores us. And this I think is a yeah. brilliant initiative. And yeah, wonderful. I mean you know uh, see from last COP to this COP, there has been a significant change. We have become more organized. We have uh, also understood how they are playing uh, the game. So we have we've, we've gotten more insight into it. We are getting better. Uh, we were protesting outside the venue in COP8, but here we are more organized in the sense we are figuring out what's happening inside, have a little more understanding of how these decisions are being made, who's playing what role. So as, as we dig deeper, we will get better at it. I mean, we just need to keep doing what we are. But why are they so opaque? Any, I mean, I, 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 cannot, I cannot understand the games that could be made by making the, making the cop so opaque. I mean, if they are actually trying to do good as they claim, Shouldn't they be publicizing it? Shouldn't they be? Are shouldn't they, they secretly be holding playing it? squid Open. games inside? Is that what's happening? <laughs> are they play, grabbing a bunch of smokers and making them play the squid games? <laughs> Why are they hiding? What are they hiding? What are they hiding? Exactly. I mean, I think we should ask Samirat. He, he was there the last COP before uh, the events unfolded. So, what was your experience like? See, uh, I mean, we were there for the plenary session where everyone gets together. Uh, which lasted for about an hour, an hour and a half, two hours, after which we were just chucked out. You know, we were escorted by police and thrown on the streets. <laughs> and if we were some criminals and had come to, you know, and I, like, us just watching what's happening inside is going to influence these people and make them change their minds, you know, maybe. So I don't know. It was, it was, uh, it was a bad experience that way. Uh, a lot of cop delegates were themselves smoking, so the ashtray outside was full of cigarettes. <laughs> <laughs> if it's so easy to influence them, you think we would have succeeded by now? See, look at the COP26, which is happening. You know, there was a report out today that the, the petrol and oil industry has the most number of delegates there. And these delegates have been nominated by the countries themselves, right? So the countries get to nominate their delegates. Uh, and it's transparent. See, it, I'm not saying everything is all right with COP26. I mean, as a as a climate a person uh, concerned with climate change, I do believe a lot more needs to be done uh, by both, by the developing world and the developed world. So I'm not happy with the with the way things are at COP6, but at least it's representative. You know, it is under because if you're going to find solutions to a problem, you cannot say that the biggest stakeholders should not be involved or even the industry should not be involved. How are you going to affect change? If you're not, you know, if if tomorrow COP26 said that we are not going to involve the car industry or the petrol <clears throat> industry, how are you going to make this change happen? So it's impractical. You know, I mean, I, I think, you know, some better sense should prevail that you are going to make change by involving the people who are stakeholders in this change. And it is not that, you know, uh, see, I mean, I don't think consumers hold the tobacco industry with that much disregard. I mean, everyone dislikes the fact that, okay, you were kept hooked to an habit by an industry which willfully lied, right? But that was also 30, 40 years ago. These companies want to survive. I'm not batting for them, but I do see the pragmatic side of it as a consumer and not 
as a tobacco control activist who is more ideologically opposed uh, and at all cost, even at the cost of not finding effective solutions. So that was uh, the problem. I mean, you know, we got clubbed as tobacco industry uh, at COP8, which was really, uh, you know, which was really sad. Even when we were protesting outside, when these delegates would come outside, we'd try to talk to them and they say, no, 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 <laughs> you know, no, no, talk to you. <laughs> You want to be really illogical to have somebody who's saying, please stop smoking, switch to something healthier, any kind of alternative linked and call them that they're from the tobacco industry. That doesn't make sense. But yeah. I have a question, Samrat. Since you were there last year, was there a single person over there who used to be a smoker, tried to quit and was able to quit with the help of vape mods? Uh, not, I don't think any of the delegates uh, did, or if they did, then they were uh, secretive about it. Uh, we were, uh, uh, you know, vapors and ex-smokers there who were protesting outside. So we obviously had transition, but uh, no one inside. You know, I mean, there was a lot of vitriol. I mean, India was chairing the session and the Indian uh, delegate, uh, you know, I mean, they were just... I mean, I don't want to take names, but you know, it was <laughs> Google it, guys. Just Google it. <laughs> <laughs> so, no, I don't think there's awareness or at least enough appreciation among the delegates about harm reduction. But this year, more so. You know, I believe there is a debate happening at COP about uh, these products. Even if you look at the Indian ban, I mean, if you followed the debate in Parliament, none of these MPs or members of Parliament or politicians had seen a way. <coughs> You know, they're talking about it as if it was some heroin or hard drug. One one MP even compared it to, uh, you know, heroin. So uh, they, they had those zero lack of awareness of what these things are. So I think that over time, uh, more of them will become aware of what it is. And some of them will go the extra mile and understand what is the benefit of it. So it is a slow change, but I think uh, it's happening and we can only help it along by doing what we are. I, I had a joke. I forgot it. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's all right. That's all right. <laughs> but but, a, but, uh, I don't know if you guys heard of this. Uh, there's, a, there's an adage. Uh, so you know, uh, the strength of your the the strength of your the strength of your conviction is actually is actually better tested when you're able to debate with somebody who doesn't believe. If that is the case, then COP9, if you look at it, they don't really believe in what they're doing. They don't have anybody to present the other side of the picture. They don't have anybody to debate with. They just have, you know, it's like a target where, you know, you just have to go and throw darts at it. Like that, I don't know. Just my take. Yeah. That answers the question I was going to ask, which is what, since India has banned it, what is India doing at COP9? But now I know they're playing darts. <laughs> They put a big, <laughs> big board over there, put a big board and they're throwing darts at it. Not. <laughs> or any kind Samrat. of harm reduction. Samrat. <laughs> oh, Samrat, yes. Samrat is like the bullseye, like right in the middle of Samrat. You, if you get it on Samrat, you win the game. <laughs> no, but seriously, Jaggi, what do you think they're doing over there? Like, I, I, I you know, they always sit and speculate how we... What they're doing, man. <laughs> This is exactly what they are up to, okay? Lovely. <laughs> I mean, uh, honest to God, man. I mean, look, uh, you, you have... They're not going to allow anyone in there. Uh, India is going to go and talk there and they own 30% of India's largest tobacco company. They're going to let them talk there. So, de facto, they are allowing tobacco industry to come and have representation in there in COP9. Big what tobacco. about, mm. yeah, big tobacco. They are there talking. Okay, they are there listening. They are there deciding policy. What about people who don't want anything to do with smokes or vapes or anything? Are they being heard? No. Is Common Bank being heard? No. What about people who quit, who want healthier lifestyles? No. What about vapors who chose such healthier lives? No, they are not doing anything about it. And it's not just India, it's 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 this blanket decision they've all got together and done. They have these secret Masonic handshakes and that's all they do. They make these shady deals amongst themselves. Most probably, we are never going to know anything about it because they don't talk about it. 
they say nothing they don't allow anyone inside that's the problem honest to god nobody gives a damn uh, you know uh, as to what they are uh, rather it's not nobody gives a damn they don't give a damn what we have <laughs> that's what it is sorry yeah, yeah. So that's what it is man they don't give a fuck sorry for my <laughs> language but No, yeah, but the book book much. said it, that's the yeah. name of the yeah. book. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But like, I'm I'm still very curious. Like, I want to speculate more on what exactly are they doing behind their closed doors in this <laughs> really secretive meeting, which is deciding our fate, our future, and you know, just not taking our inputs on it you i know, i need a clear uh, answer know, on this i'm i'm open to the audience also giving their opinions on what do you think is happening in those meetings see when what i saw in the last cop uh, so there was uh, after the plenary session uh, everyone votes to throw out uh, like people like us so when uh, when that vote came up uh, canada and uh, european union and surprisingly mexico they stood up and said let's live stream the entire event let's ensure there is complete transparency so if anyone is trying to bear an influence it will be visible to all right so being transparent is actually a great way to uh, uh, you know uh, prevent that influence from taking place because then everyone sees what's going on uh, if anyone is batting for the tobacco industry the whole world sees it so i so that was their take on it and guess who stands up and says no we should keep it a secret india stands up with tobacco industry interest thailand stands up african countries uh, you know uh, which again have tobacco industry interest so it was appearing to me as if people or nations which have tobacco industry stakes are the ones who want to keep it secret uh which you know makes you wonder if it is one set of traders trying to you know uh, keep that space for themselves and keeping private traders out so um, there has you know until fctc addresses that problem you know of countries with tobacco industry ownership being part of debate or you know getting to influence policy i don't think the whole the premise or whole argument that article 5.3 should apply and you know we should uh, keep everything closed and secret i don't think that makes sense at all either you do it right then okay you sanction countries which have tobacco industry stake so that they cannot influence decisions here what did we have in india we had a vape ban which helped the tobacco industry and it's directly evident through their stock prices going up how did that help the people of the country so you will keep having decisions like these made which are made to sound like health decisions but actually financial decisions samrat it's it's, it's simple see first they, they sell you the tobacco by owning majority of it then they charge you on it heavily <laughs> the profit is also going to them the tax is also going to them they're getting rich it's all about the money ching but uh, we have another question by h michel we all know him very nicely and well but uh, this this question is for you how many lives could be saved in india if snus was widely available and affordable and accepted by oral tobacco users <clears throat> yeah so i think uh, that's a great question because the largest the largest largest proportion of tobacco users are by far oral tobacco users smokeless tobacco rather so if there was a way to get news across to these people i think we could be saving a lot a lot of lives i i mean i don't want to speculate but it's upwards of 200 you know it's upwards of 200 300 million uh i think much more i think my numbers are wrong so basically see if you look at it snus is actually uh, a gray area in india uh, there was an act which banned it inadvertently this is before even and before we had even heard of snus so there was this drugs and there was this drugs and cosmetics act which banned any kind of nicotine additives in foods especially toothpaste so that had the that had the indirect effect of affecting snus but nevertheless snus is not named anywhere so snus is also not widely available in india so if there was a way to make it available or even a nicotine pouch for that matter i think definitely it would help people so we are trying to do that we are trying to create awareness but you know so it's still early days we still have to find people who could uh make it in india who could who could get it 
who, who could get it past the who could get it past the right clearances so i think that's that that's where we are right now still creating awareness tin foil hat moment what think, is this think, uh, okay so i'll let samrat go to add a little bit to that you know uh, see there like kiran pointed out that there are 200 million smokeless tobacco users in this country so every for every smoker in india there are two smokeless tobacco users uh 350000 people who use uh, these products die every year or premature, premature deaths in this population every year so indian smokeless tobacco is a serious problem you know actually it is a huge problem uh, and we are not talking about the oral cancers 80% of oral cancers and contribution to other cancers and morbidity and smokeless tobacco use is generally associated with people from lower social economic background right so it it is impacting people who can least afford medical care or uh, who can least afford to handle the health consequences of tobacco use so it is very important to look at this segment and see how we can reduce harm what we don't have is adequate cessation support or any counseling nrts are not affordable to smokers how can people who are using smokeless tobacco afford them so we need to look at harm reduction so snus and nicotine pouches can both be made cheap in in this country you know we are producing a huge amount of tobacco i think we are the second largest producer of tobacco so it just requires certain willingness on part of the government it it is a ready solution which can be implemented it just requires the government to understand that harm reduction is a viable strategy which i think we are stuck at that point where the health ministry and the government is uh, either not aware or anti harm reduction and i think a bunch of it is also flowing from uh you know the crap that is coming from the who okay i'm done <laughs> <laughs> okay <laughs> if only we could take your word for it <laughs> i know yeah so i i i mean, uh, i'd like to hear a bit more i'd like to hear a bit more especially regarding our smokeless tobacco users so i think no. uh, what i mean uh if you look at it let's try and deconstruct what the government has been telling us that you know this whole thing is for the health reasons and not for financial reasons so what kind of taxes do they pay anybody sorry what kind Mr. of and done take over no, no i mean if you actually <laughs> looking at uh, i'm actually looking at trying to deconstruct our you know uh, what what our what our uh, what our health minister is actually saying regarding I, why they're trying to clamp down on tobacco so are they doing the same for smokeless tobacco are they doing the same for bds no, no I, i think those are not taxed that heavily i think they're actually mm-hmm. bloody reasonably priced for some unholy <laughs> reason <laughs> it, it's, it's like a population right. control strategy <laughs> or something in my opinion <laughs> no uh, it is political uh, because uh, see the the smokeless tobacco trade is completely run in an unorganized way and the politicians themselves are some of the biggest stakeholders in the business so that i think is preventing uh, any uh, uh, tax action in that front you know i mean that's why they are hardly taxed uh, they keep saying that it's a proportion of the tax but like you know 20 20% of a really low amount is not going to affect much uh, on how much those products cost but that said i don't think uh increasing taxes is the way uh to handle a problem like that because what will happen is there will be a black market mm-hmm. so uh you i mean i think it's uh better to give people options to reduce harm because everyone is driven uh by self preservation uh if you give them moralistic uh thing that oh quit it you know that obviously it's not working because people are using those products to fulfill some need in their life so if you give them an option you know which is more pragmatic uh, and effective then I, they are going to take it and as long as it's also affordable and not and easy to access so uh, you know we worked on a project where uh, we uh, worked on a snus flavor you know because snus snus is usually made in flavors which are western to make it in indian flavors and uh, we did a roll out and we got some really inspire i mean encouraging results that people would transition to it especially if it came uh, 
they if they were told that this is less harmful they are willing to try it and they were willing to pay a you know a small amount more so it can work i mean it uh, you know there is a proof of concept there is uh, we know that it's possible to do it we need some willingness samrat you know absolutely nothing the only way to stop all of this is to put <laughs> ugly pictures on the packages That yeah. 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 Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Who do you know who has quit smoking oh. or using uh, smokeless tobacco because of these pictures? I mean, it looks very good on research papers, but I don't see it happening. I mean, I haven't heard of anyone. Have we don't have any pictorial warnings. We don't have any pictorial warnings on BDs, do we? No, no, we don't. Obviously, we used not. to, but then the government changed uh, under changed the it. pressure no. from the BD lobby. Uh, it it <coughs> took back that ban. Uh, took that uh, the pictorial warnings on BD packets. So on they threatened to go on strike. Uh, the BD <laughs> manufacturers threatened to go on strike, and that's uh, oh. that's when they rolled it back. <laughs> but see, ITC can't go on strike because that means the government will have to go on strike. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> It's beautiful. I just you know these fact warnings make no difference. So you know people who are going to buy cigarettes are going to buy cigarettes. No, no. If if you notice, uh, again, taxes don't work. Uh, there are so many uh, you know non-tax paid cigarettes that are floating around in the market, and ITC keeps screaming about it, uh, saying that uh, you have to clamp down on this. You have to clamp down, and this is a cigarette manufacturer talking about it himself. And they, they, it's a secret. I mean, if you make it. so high you are going to have this gray market it's of course uh, known to everyone who actually makes money in the gray market it's greasing some politicians pockets right now he is giving the go ahead just like alcohol in gujarat okay these things are available everywhere i mean uh, let's not kid ourselves okay so raising taxes is not the answer you got to regulate you got to you got to look at it sensibly you got to be more effective they came up with some uh, unheard of uh, i mean ridiculous things you know no cigarette shop within 100 meters of schools uh, you go 10 meters What, away. i had one right in front of my school i'm saying man. i mean oh. no, okay fine things. so if so if you if you won't go 100 meters from a school they will operate at 101 meters how does that help health you know, now they're saying health, health. Now they're saying then people, people have to walk more. more yeah you it walk all, more. it is all about <laughs> making people work for a healthier lifestyle You you have to do more effort, like going to the gym. Yeah, yeah. Do we have a question? I think from the audience. <clears throat> okay, I I oh, at this point I have come to the realization, by the way, and uh, that there is a very strong possibility. A lot of our international viewers have no clue what BDs are, uh-huh. and uh, BDs are this really low quality. Uh, tobacco rolled in a leaf dried up leaf kind of a cigarette and they're extra cheap and they have zero filters and they have like bad quality tobacco and everything and they're used by the poorer population as a replacement for cigarettes i i think that's cheap. the best definition i can give for it and uh, yeah so on an average uh, i think it's about uh, 20 or 30 bucks for a packet of 25 it's that cheap and in dollars that's like 0.4 dollars Yeah, zero four. Yeah, zero four. <laughs> cents. No, for, yeah, for four cents. For a packet, it's point point four, not zero four. Yeah. Okay. Point four for a packet of twenty five. Yeah. Yeah. And see, that's the problem. So now, if you look at it, cigarettes are like. I mean, if you look at, if you want to, uh, if you want to, if you want to, if you want to try and draw, if you want to try and draw a picture. So if you have a, if you see the base, the base is made up of smokeless tobacco. and a little bit higher up you have bds and at the apex which is a small proportion you have cigarettes but the tax structure is inverse so the largest tax is on cigarettes and there's hardly anything on bds which are a bigger problem and more dangerous and there's absolutely nothing on smokeless tobacco because it's unorganized apparently so they can't tax it and the same thing holds good for the who playbook so if you look at who playbook they go by pictorial warnings and taxes and blah 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 but uh, our very powerful bd lobby did away with pictorial warnings on those packets of bd so there it goes and we already spoke about taxes so you have this sort of pretense out in the open where you know uh, they say that they're trying to improve public health by taxation but then taxation is only for the products which are less used 
which are uh, in the least which are in the least proportion so that really doesn't make sense and and if you actually look at it you know they removed the pictorial warnings i think about a week before our esteemed health minister won that award from the who for doing outstanding work in tobacco control i mean that itself was such hogwash what a farce I mean, you know, each one patting each other's back if you look at the time that's exactly how it was there is a joke you guys hmm so with that we're going to begin winding up it's it's been a fun session but uh, before we end there is one question which needs to be answered and which is if you could give any input or any suggestion if you could say something to the delegates indian delegates at cop9 what would it be and uh, jaggi since your mic is the worst you start <laughs> i think you got to uh... take uh, harm reduction uh, seriously and you got to look at it and uh, if you do uh, want to follow the charter in letter and spirit of what the fctc does talk about you got to start looking at it seriously you got to invite all stakeholders in into your discussions and deliberations and we are all there willing uh, not just uh, representatives from india but from all over the world the evidence is out there Uh, let us help you understand it so you can make better representations out there dr karan yeah, yeah. so uh, yeah <laughs> i think uh, we all have heard this so it's uh, nothing about us without us right so if you're going to make decisions that affect us you should try and listen to us but i think i'm going to tell this to the rest of the delegates apart from our indian one you should be throwing out big tobacco what is what is india doing at that place <laughs> yeah correct i mean if uh, if if the fctc bore down you know uh, i was seeing on twitter yesterday uh, today they have given a dirty ashtray award to philippines for uh, speaking uh, in favor of harm reduction and <clears throat> you know they anyway shame naming and shaming philippines for speaking its mind and speaking in favor of harm reduction now if they can do that they can very well also also name and shame countries which have break stake in tobacco industry right so it is possible that for the you know because they keep taking this view that oh these countries are sovereign so therefore we cannot interfere with their you know what they want to do then how is it that you are uh, applying or sort of bullying other nations philippines and guatemala is what the whom they singled out if you if you able to do that why are you not able to then uh, at least penalize these countries in some way you know you india chaired the cop you know how much more inside the circle <laughs> can you get so you, you 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 engage with them but then you do not make them part of certain decision making so that it it uh, sort of pushes them to you know divest their stake in tobacco companies so one is that you know one is of course uh, there is a way that the who fctc can bear pressure on these nation i think uh, what else uh, I, i mean other thing that i would like to tell the indian delegates is listen uh, you have a tobacco problem which is unique which is different try to find out solutions that work you know have an open mind look at solutions that work and not try to appease or you know uh, make uh, these international groups or who happy for policies that they have crafted for the whole world because your situation is different your and and have the nerve to stand up uh, for what is good for your country i mean of course that first thing is that divest your stake in the tobacco industry but at the same time you can also uh, look at harm reduction which can have a lot of benefit you know at a population level so yeah that and to end it to all the viewers out there to all the ngos who are fighting this to all the vapers globally this is a storm which you may find yourself in the middle of right now or it might be coming to you soon some day but the storm is coming definitely how far or near you are to it is different for all of us right now but it's a storm which is coming and we all need to stand united and fight this off 
not only for ourselves but for the betterment of all other people out there this is a health right which we should be fighting for so stand strong you are not alone when you are fighting this we are with you and we hope we can count on you in our times of need and to the delegates over there in indian delegates over there for once don't be the followers be the leaders set the standard speak up you know harm reduction is real you've been saying it for 2 years covid taught us harm reduction as a possibility we've been doing this we've been wearing masks we've been sanitizing that's a form of harm reduction apply the same level of intelligence when it comes to tobacco please we begging you save lives with, with that thank you everyone for joining us today <laughs> take care wish you all the health until time yep thank you is this where i just press end button do i do, I do something now i, I don't know <laughs> i'm really hard at the ending after i'm done speaking let's all move to the uk <laughs> yeah that next <laughs> yep. thank you everyone thank you thank you everybody thank you bye now bye bye bye